This is Greg Troutwine with Marine Technology Reporter, and we're very pleased to be joined today by Sam Taylor, Business Development Director for Ocean Infinity, to talk about this unique company and its mission in the maritime and the subsea space. So Sam, I am quite certain that most people watching this know the Ocean Infinity name, and if they don't, perhaps they should get out of the industry. <laughs> no, I won't say get out of the industry, but why don't you just start us off, just give us an over, a brief overview of the company today. Yeah. Well, Ocean Infinity really is a, a business that has a long history. Um, it's a name that's been around for a, for a few years, but we've, we've got a, a long track record and pedigree that's going back 40 years in the business. Ocean Infinity just now, we would describe ourselves as a technology company that's using innovative robotic technologies to transform operations at sea. Our aim really is to use uh, technology that we are creating and that others in the market are using to make things safer, to make things more efficient, to improve our environmental impact, and to make a, make a real impact on, on maritime operations, both from the vessel perspective and from the subsea technologies that we'll be using. Okay, well, I mean, it's interesting. We're here in London at the Oceanology yeah. Show, and this is for my Marine Technology Reporter brand, but we have, uh, we have properties on the maritime side, the offshore energy side, the subsea, the ports and logistics side, and there are many pervasive trends today from decarbonization to automation and autonomy. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when you talk about the transition from crewed vessels to uncrewed vessels, there are a lot of people talking the talk. There are some that are actually walking the walk. Mm -hmm. But as you know more than any, it's a process. Yes. There are many steps along the way. Why don't you discuss the steps that you're taking, that you are taking today, and that you're looking to take tomorrow. You said it absolutely right. It's a, it's a step process. It's not something that we can just turn on and start operating complex ships and complex operations with nobody on board. We take a step approach uh, within Ocean Infinity, both looking at smaller uncrewed support vessels and large offshore vessels as well. And I would draw our attention to the Armada series of 78 meter vessels that we now are proud owners of eight ships. Um, these ships have been delivered to us through the course of 2023 and will be used over a variety of, uh, of operations, uh, delivering services from AUVs, uh, geotechnical, ROV operations, and geophysical surveys as well. And these are complicated operations that would, you know, in a conventional sense will require 40, perhaps 50 people offshore to, to deliver that project safely. We'll be doing these operations with 16 people on board that vessel. Now, it's not a case, of course, of where's the rest of the, the personnel? They, have they gone? No. We're talking about relocating of those expertise and those capabilities to one of our control centers that we have in, in the UK, in Sweden, and uh, new centers that we've announced as well in, in Australia and, uh, and elsewhere. But the process is, is uh, as you say, it's a step solutions in order to get where we want to get to. We have to work with regulators, both on flag states, uh, maritime regulators, international regulations for the vessel. We have to deal with what our clients are expecting, how they want to see the safety of marine operations continue uh, in an uncrewed or a lean crewed vessel sense as well. And then there's the technology piece. We are acquiring more and more data uh, with all of our operations that we perform subsea. And that data needs to get back, be processed, and be turned into useful information. Um, so uh, we, it's Ocean Infinity, we are looking, uh, developing our solutions for delivery of what we call our payloads, so our subsea equipment from control from our control center in Southampton. We're looking at how we get that data back from the vessel into these control centers to be used. And now also working with um, regulators such as uh, DNB in approving the next step of vessel and marine remote operations. Uh, so we've been working with DNB to have what we have now as our approval in principle for our first release stage of marine remote operations. And that starts to move some of more of the administrative duties from the vessel to our control centers, remove some of the processes uh, such as uh, officer and watch duties, uh, monitoring the radio signals, providing passage planning for the vessel, 
all of these now can be supported from the control center onshore. And so we start to remove some of the, the, the burden, some of the, uh, the workload from the vessel, allowing the marine crew that's still on board to concentrate on operations that they'll be performing uh, still on the vessel. And as I said though, these aren't things that we can just do unilaterally. We have to work with the regulators. We have to ensure that there's a, there's a demand from the client side as well, that they want to see these solutions come in place. And uh, what we see with uh, the start of operations from the Armada 78 series is that once we've built the ships, we've tested them, we've trialed them, we've delivered them now onto a first series of projects, we start to see uh, the demand from the clients uh, for, for the services that, that, that we're offering, the solutions that we have. Uh, what is really good about this industry, and you'll see from all around at Oceanology International today, is that we're not doing a lot of this work uh, independently or alone as Ocean Infinity. There are many companies around here that are working on remote solutions and uncrewed vessels. So there's a real upswell of capability from the market. Of course, what we would say is different with Ocean Infinity is that we have the largest ships that are building upon remote technologies. And with that size of vessel comes a great deal of capability on those ships as well. And that's what really stands the Armada 78 meter boats out from anything else that we see around in oceanology uh, today.